This is On The Charts with Nick Radge, your Australian stock market update. Highlighting stocks on the move so that you can invest with confidence and success. Information in this podcast is general advice only and does not take into account your personal situation. Please consider if it is appropriate to you and consult a licensed professional before making any investment decisions. The information provided is believed to be accurate at the time of recording. Welcome to the On The Charts podcast, episode 187 for Tuesday, 3rd of May, 2017. U.S. trading was reasonably quiet ahead of the much-expected Apple results, which came out after the market the close. The massive tech giant added 0.6% during the day session, but lost 1.8% after the announcement in the night session. Apple announced a fall in iPhone sales, suggesting the buyers are holding back for the September release of the 10-year anniversary phone. The company also announced it will boost its capital return program by $50 billion and its share repurchase plan by $35 billion. Other big losers last night after negative earnings with advanced micro devices, which slid 24%, and Twilio, which fell 30% in after hours. In night trading, the S&P 500 futures are basically unchanged, but we do expect volatility to continue as analysts digest the Apple data, and the Federal Reserve meets tonight, but no change to rates is expected. In Australia today, all eyes turned to Vocus yet again after it downgraded its outlook for the second time in seven months. Its shares resumed their plunge toward oblivion, falling another 27% today and are now 75% off its highs of just 12 months ago. The big end of town also suffered, firstly after a report from Bill Potter that banks are a sell, citing evidence that they tend to perform poorly in the next few months after earnings. This was amplified after yesterday's ANZ result, which fell short of expectations, and what may lay ahead for the balance of banks' earnings in the coming weeks. The Australian market is acutely weighted to the performance of the banks, so weakness there will therefore will dip the broader market. And Pete Hammersley, author of the ASX Chart Research Service, has been suggesting a defensive stance on the banks for the last months or so. He cites several patterns on both weekly and daily timeframes that suggest upside momentum has been lost and that risks to the downside have accelerated. In reference to the banking index itself, the pattern progression remains well within the bounds of a larger correction, which started back in early 2005. 15. Now, agreed, the banks have had a good run over the last six months or so, but even so, that's deemed a bounce and not the start of a new trend into new high ground. The banking index currently stands at 76.80, and worst case, there's scope for a significant correction, similar to what we saw in 2015 when the index declined by 20%. That said, we don't foresee that scenario playing out here. There is major support down around that 6,800 level, which has a high probability of being tested. Bank shareholders should brace for some new weakness and would only really be concerned if that 6,800 level does break. Other big names that fell today were BHP, 2% down, ANZ and NAB both fell 2.5%, Rio slipped 0.75%. Fairfax fell 1.2% after the company announced it will cut 25% of its journalists to save $30 million. And on the positive side, Accenture Group added 13.7%, Oracobra added 8%, and at the close, the market was about 0.8% lower and off the session's lows. Mineral resources fell 3.9% today and we continue to see further downside unfolding in the coming months. Analysts remain upbeat, however, citing the recent weakness in iron ore is the key driver of the price weakness, but also suggest that lithium is going to become the greater driver in earnings in the years ahead. Other reasons to remain bullish longer term include the Mount Marion Lithium Project is running to schedule, its strong balance sheet, and further cost reductions are in the pipeline. Now, technically, the stock remains in a corrective movement, and if price follows the typical progression, we should expect further weakness to fulfil that typical pattern. We believe that longer term higher prices will be seen, but investors should be offered a better level to initiate positions somewhere down around the $8 to $9 level versus today's close of $10.25. A near-term rise may be seen seen, but at this stage we'd see that as a false start. And just a reminder that Noosa Palooza is just a few months away and that over 50% of available tickets have been sold. If you're looking to expand your knowledge, we've sourced industry-leading professionals for you to connect with, as well as other like-minded traders and investors. It's not just about the technical analysis either. We'll be covering value investing, foreign exchange trading, and a long short ETF investing strategy. Head over to thechartist.com.au and select the Newsom Palooza link for more details, and we look forward to seeing you there in July. My name is Nick Raj, and I'll see you on the charts tomorrow. 
on the charts with Nick Radge, brought to you by The Chartist. Join Nick and the team at Noosa Palooza Trading and Investment Conference, 20th and 21st of July in beautiful Noosa, Queensland. Visit thechartist.com.au and click on Noosa Palooza in the menu for details.